Hey everyone, welcome to the Game Week 19 review video, probably the last video before we hit Christmas break. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to get it in while everything was fresh in my mind, and then we'll maybe do a couple more bonus ones. If you didn't see the one from uh, yesterday, I believe, about blanks and doubles, please check it out. I think it might be helpful. Um, but other than that, we might get a couple other random ones before the Game Week 20 preview video. So stay tuned and let me know what you want to see. Um, but we're going to look at this week. And it was a low score, but honestly, it was a low score around the league. Not a lot of big name players scoring goals. If you had someone that scored a goal, it was like a major differential that helped you move the up the table because the main captain and stuff like that were not scoring this game week. And my biggest player is not someone that I would have pegged um, this week for bringing my point getter. And you can already see him on the screen and he's in the icon. Never thought Provodal would be the icon of the video, but he definitely earned it this week. So let's run over how this game week went. And I probably want to finish with them, but it just feels right to start with the goal. And what a game Provado played against Napoli. That'll be one of the last teams I'd expect a big score, maybe some save points, maybe three or four points if I'm lucky. And he goes and scores 12 fantasy points. That is due to a clean sheet, uh, two points for saves, two points for um playing at least 60 minutes. And then I think believe he swept up all three bonus points. Yeah, he did. So absolutely outstanding game for a 4.5 goalie playing on one of the worst teams in Serie A. But Spezia picked up the win without even taking a shot on target because it was an own goal that uh, gave Spezia the one nothing win. So that's pretty crazy. And I was watching majority of that, especially the second half. But my nails being like, well, they already got scored on. So Mira Ruiz clean sheet doesn't matter anymore. Uh, I'm just hoping for the Spezia clean sheet and it happened. So I was very happy with that. And that kind of saved my week because other than that, it was pretty crappy. Um, we're looking at the rest of the defense. Roma got scored against uh, after not too long after they scored. So Karlsdorp only gets the two points for playing. Uh, Mario Rui just gets the one for starting. Didn't even make it 60 minutes. I actually didn't even know that. I thought he did. Um, I guess he did. Oh, playing bonus. There you go. And he gets minus one for getting a card. So I'm assuming that this red is for a player suspension and not injury because I didn't hear from him getting injured at all. Um, but yeah, he's facing Juve next week anyway. I probably wouldn't have, or next game week anyway, so I probably wouldn't have started him anyway. Uh, Benucci was the only other player that kind of did his job and got the clean sheet as Juve put up back to back clean sheets now. So that was all right. Um, and I was happy there. But other than that, the defense not looking too good. Actually, there was one other defender that I had that did do well. It was Kimbiaso. I've set so many points on him in the last three weeks. It's frustrating because you never know when you can play him. And you're not assuming Genoa is going to hold a clean sheet against Atalanta. But I was kind of hoping because I knew uh, he side didn't play. So I was hoping I'd have at least one other player that didn't play. So I'm going to get the sub in and it just didn't happen. Because um, that could have brought me into the 40s and actually helped me climb up the table significantly more. But sitting those six points is kind of rough. Uh, honestly, nothing else exciting to talk about with the rest of the team. Uh, Passage came out as a sub for some reason. It's just not getting those consistent starts. A lot of rotation in the Atalanta squad, so not much for him. Uh, it's hard because you know he, Passage can put up huge scores, but also can do absolutely nothing, including not even getting two points sometimes. So kind of tough to judge sometimes with him. Uh, against Roma, I wasn't really expecting Kondreva to do well. In fact, he started in my first bench spot because he said I didn't play that he got into the squad. Just the two points didn't contribute to the goal. Quadrado gets the third for the midfielder clean sheet. Had a couple chances, to be honest, but again, nothing else came. But for his price and position, he's been good so far. I'll probably keep him around for a bit longer. We'll see. Uh, Berardi, he's been kind of disappointing since I brought him in second straight week that there was no contribution from and to swallow seemed like they played a really bad game against Bologna. I didn't can't say I actually watched the game very much, but I followed it and I was just checking and nope, uh, they just had nothing going forward, which is why I got poor points from Skamaka as well up front, both of them just getting points for playing. Uh, and the two captains that I was deciding between didn't really make a difference between which one I chose. Uh, Let's throw Martinez was the first forward subbed out. Um, so yeah, not much there. And Vlaovic also didn't score anything. So not much to talk about there with the two strikers. Um, now going into 
the break. They're going to have some time off. They don't have Champions League in between. They actually don't have Champions League for a while. So I do believe the next game for these players is going to be uh, for their club on after January 6th. I forget what day. I think it's January 6th or around then uh, that they're going to play games again. And I have a feeling each team should be using their top squad because everyone's going to be rested, assuming that there's no COVID cases in the team and stuff like that. So I do think that uh, Latoro should get into the first team again for that game. But uh, we'll see. But I'm not really looking to sell him just yet. Otherwise, aside from Kimbiaso, the bench just got zeros across the board, which I was kind of expecting. And um, But otherwise, yeah, that's it. There was some interesting results, like the Roma draw, the Spezia win, Fiorentina drew. And at least Juve is starting to put together some nice wins, which is good. But that's how the team lined up. Nothing too exciting. Just like I said, it kind of happened to everyone. So I actually still went up the overall standings by like three spots. I believe I was at 419 before and I'm at 416. So uh, not that different in the overall standings as this was a common theme for everyone. But I did jump up two spots in our league, which was nice. Not I don't have a big lead on Galactico FC and Ebra 11, but I did pass them, which is nice. Uh, and uh, Fox, I think, had a significantly bad week. Uh, let's see if we can let's go total and back one. So from 1034 to 1060. So that's a pretty rough week. I believe that's like 26 points. So it really allowed some people to catch up. And um, and now the span is seven points in between one and two. It drops off a little bit, but still after that, everyone, I'd even say above a thousand, the top six, this is can be made up in one really good game week or obviously over the course of half the season. There's still a lot to play for here, even going down further. There's still lots of time if someone has a good week, picks a good captaincy. Some people might be starting to use chips and stuff. So that's something to keep an eye on. Um, also, as mentioned in the last video, just highlighting again, this was a blank game week, meaning there was not 10 games in the schedule. Udinese and Swarnatana got canceled. Um, now that I don't think would affect too many people. It did surprise me that last week, De La Feo and Molina were two of the most brought in teams uh, or players. Uh, so maybe it did affect a lot of people. Now that might've been one or two people that people couldn't play. Not many people have Swarnatana players. So I wasn't too worried there, just maybe some Udinese players. And You'd want a perfect schedule. You'd want that game to be made up at some point, causing a double game week. But there is rumors that this was going to be considered a forfeit in favor of Udinese, and this game won't be replayed. And there's seen some talk that if Salernitana doesn't sell the team to a different owner in basically a week, they might just get relegated right out of Syria as it is. So it, there's some complications going on in Syria, especially surrounding Salernitana right now. Um, but just something to look out for and to look out for that rescheduling of that match, assuming it'll get rescheduled. I think it will. I don't think they're just going to cancel a game because this happened twice last year, I think. Uh, one of them, the one I remember more, is the Juve Napoli situation where, yeah, they counted as a forfeit at first when they went back on that and changed it. So I'm assuming it might be something like that. Um, but we'll see. And it's something definitely to keep an eye out for because if you have – for instance, a Delafeu or Molina or someone that's got two games and you think that they're going to start both, it might even be worth captaining them or using a double captain during that time uh, to really maximize the amount of points you can get. But we'll talk about that more when that comes. Obviously, if I see that rescheduled game, I'll be pointing it out and talking about ways to approach that as well. Do take a look at the last video though as that could be helpful just in general for game weeks like that and if there are future cancellations with which the way that the premier league has gone there's been tons and hopefully that this is not going to be a big deal but this is the first of what could potentially be more cancellations in syria as well although it's kind of nice that there was that cancellation and then we have like two weeks break that hopefully teams can get themselves in order so there's not more ca cancellations after that but overall, that's kind of all I have to say from there. Um, we'll maybe take a quick look at these gaming things. Still De La Feu up there for players bringing in. And honestly, these players all make a lot of sense. Pedro has been absolutely crazy this uh, as of recent so far. So someone I'm definitely looking into. 
and players going out. Yeah, I'm gonna say a lot of these players make sense as well. Joe Pedro, I, mean, I think he's a player that you want to keep around if you can. Uh, but everyone else is kind of making sense. And as you can see here, why not a lot of people got points is there are not too many big name players here that a lot of people own. Some like Bernadeschi, Kessie, Acherby, like they're big name players, but not really ones that people have had in their teams. And luckily I have the keeper right here. But that's all for today. Please like and subscribe to the video. Let me know how you liked it. Um, let me know what other videos you want to see over at the break. And Merry Christmas to all of you. I hope you have a great holidays with yourselves and your families. Take care.